Got a nat twenty on my nice. D twenty. I got a terrible. Whoa! I got really bad. I okay. Fifty. Oh really? You didn't get that great either. But guess what? I got forty-seven. <gasps> so you oh, won. Wait, wait. Welcome back to Adventurists. To this nonsense podcast, Roger, where we have very serious talks about blue yeti creatures with dandruff. <laughs> Invisible forming dandruff. Yep. <laughs> and on that topic, and thanks that everybody topic. again for joining us today for another episode. We're going to continue the story of Kia. We were just talking off off mic a second ago about how far we are. Yeah. And uh, I think we're kind of closing in on Act 2. So I'm guessing you're going to get up to like level 8, maybe Yay. 10, somewhere in there. So we're going in, but we are going to jump back in here in just a moment. Are you ready? Three. Are we counting down? I mean, yes. <laughs> okay. I think so. Three. Twenty. Seventeen. Welcome. Wait, we already wait, did wait, all this. Wait, <laughs> what are we? you doing? I was just talking I'm about confused. the recap. <laughs> <laughs> all right, recap. Last week on the adventure, Kia found herself sneaking up to the town of Wander Wharf, hot on the trail of Czar Bloodhoof and her f- dear friend Maud, who had been on the hunt trying to figure stuff out, something about a trap. Maybe it was involved with the bloodhounds, maybe not. You don't know. But she got caught up with Czar in Athon, and when he went to steal a cap that you still have in your bag, she somehow got captured by the bloodhounds and was stuck in their vehicle. As you chased after them, you came up to the city of Wander Wharf, where you stumbled upon an old buddy of yours, Cabot Cranberry and Frogrick. And they told you that they'd been keeping an eye on the city. It looked as though the bloodhounds had rolled in and pulled some people out of their vehicle, gathered up the townsfolk, and from a very, very far distance, you could see Czar Bloodhoof interrogating the townsfolk, including what seemed like Harwick, Thistle, Beryl Grom, and Maud. Though, after I saw Beryl, Harwick, and maybe Maud um, being interrogated, I was trying to find a way to get into the town unnoticed by the bloodhounds, and Cabot suggested we try to find... The, the Mojingle. Mojingle. <laughs> a mythical creature that he had been searching for to re- research. A blue yeti beast with magical dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> that turns itself and other things invisible. It is. And you actually had realized after he mentioned that that you had an encounter with the Mojingle because it had stolen your watch of speed. Hmm. So you made your way up into the mountain, and you quickly realized that this mountain was also the site of an old note that you found courtesy of a wild magic storm that pointed you towards a treasure trove, (laughs) guarded by a large scraper called a roll golem. You snuck down using the hat. Mm -hmm. It kind of gave you a little bit of a blueprint of past world stuff, which was cool. It rubber banded my head all over the place. Yeah. It pointed you in the direction, and then once you were in there, it kind of like imprinted, like, for lack of a better term, from video game mini map into your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys snuck in. You were able to dodge past the roll golem, snuck down barely, even though it it attacked you, did some damage to you. You were able to sneak through a crack and find the Mojingle's lair. Whereupon, oh, uh, um, me in Cabot. And Frogrick and Flibbit, it's a lot of uh, names, uh, walked into the Mojingle's lair and we saw the Mojingle uh, guffawing over its uh, horde of past world items. Mm -hmm. And so Cabot offered up an exchange for a favor for some treasure. Yep. Cabot dumped out some past world tech on the ground, offered it up to trade as 
for the Mojingle, and the Mojingle seemed happy, and then the Mojingle agreed to help you guys. And then he noticed that you carried some interesting weapons that he had as well. Uh, not that he used, but he noticed your bow, and he noticed your short swords. And he went into his treasure trove cache, and he pulled out for you a new bow. Called the Scraper's Bane. Mm-hmm. It seemed to be made of scraper parts, which was cool. The Scraper's Bane, and then the very, very amazing Spoon Sword and Fork Knife. (laughs) Bladed utensils that projected energy beams of attackiness in front of them, and you were able to replace your two short swords. And then Cabot looked at you, he said, This is all wonderful, but how on earth are we going to deal with the Roll Golem? And the Mojingle looked at all of you guys, and he said, We go (laughs) no-see. And then he shook his dandruff all over you guys. You turned invisible, and you started to make your way out of the cave. Mm -hmm. That's where we are now. We find ourselves breaking free of this cave and starting the trek down the hill towards Wander Wharf. Well, did we get past the roll golem by going... No see. No as. see. Well, so the way that the Mojingle led you, I think I did this cinematically last time, but yeah. the way that the Mojingle led you was up through a different crack that he used to get in and out where it didn't really mess with the roll mm-hmm. golem that much. Okay. So in theory, but now you emerge, you are still on that area of the mountain where the roll golem was, and you know you have a couple hours to get back down to Wander Wharf before nightfall. Okay. I whisper to my invisible comrades, um, well, we're, um, Cabot, are you gonna stay here or go into the town? Ah, well, I'm not a fighter too much. I I have a little bit of time in my my past with some scraps, but I I feel as though I owe you, and so I will do my best to come into town and at least help you however I can. Thank you. Okay. Plus, I would love to keep close to the Mojingle, wherever he is. I'm assu- Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, and uh, we will make our way down and help you get your friends. Thank you. Frogrick and Flibbit are nearby. And the Mojingle says, We go no see still. May- you don't have to do it right now, but when we get close to the town that is uh, down the mountain... Um, I would like us to go no see. No see fun. And then suddenly you kind of realize you can start seeing your hand again. Mm-hmm. And you realize the Mojingle is standing there and the dandruff seems to be dissipating. <laughs> <laughs> and you are visible once more. Yay. Um, I guess I head down the mountain. Okay, you start heading down the mountain. Uh... As you go, are you planning on moving quickly or moving stealthily? Moving quickly, but more stealthily as we get closer. Okay, so for right now, right moving now, quickly? Yeah. Okay. Can you please roll for me a stealth check? Or wait, sorry, am I am I still on cuz if I'm still on the gravel? You're not on the gravel. You went out a different path. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was like she she would have gone quietly yeah, if no, it was I on figured. the gravel. No, no. You went out you came out a different path. You kind of circled back around. You see that gravel pad where you went down Mm -hmm. next to. Um, It was a little uh, higher up, and you guys went down into the Mojingles layer, so. Okay. 18. 18, okay. That was a lot of dice rolls. I don't like it. you have companions. Oh, 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 okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You guys start hustling it down the mountain, and I I, I just like to imagine the Mojingle is, like, skipping next to you. (laughs) because he thinks you guys are interesting. Mm. Getting used to the weight of your new bow and the two uh, swords at your hip, Flibbit comes over and he goes, well, that was quite an adventure. That was quite a find, too. Are you? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Excited about your new stuff. Yeah. I like These are really nice, despite being giant utensils. They're really nice. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see how they fare against Tsar Bloodhoof. Yes. What exactly is the play from when we get into Dowd? Sneak in, past the bloodhounds, get up next to uh, to Beryl and um, those two other people, and improvise. <laughs> that sounds about like the Kia way. 
<laughs> Cabot peeks up and he goes, did you say improvise? Yes. Fascinating. I love watching you work, Kia. It is quite entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and you guys keep hustling down the mountain. Um, for lack of... Uh, there's a lack of anything in your path. We mm-hmm. don't need to do any random encounters or anything. You guys, especially with the mo jingle there, any creatures or uh, things that looked like they might have wanted to attack saw the giant blue eight foot tall yeti. yeti next to you and thought twice about it. <laughs> and you guys start making your way back down into Wander Wharf as night is coming. I say, so how far away are we now? We'll say you're a half mile out approaching and the sun is finally setting and is dark as you kind of approach. Torchlights start popping up around the town. Again, the reminder, the town is actually like built along a cliff edge with docks and piers going out. From yeah. it. It's like every building in this place basically has an ocean side view. Yeah. And the entire town, which isn't huge, uh, has a big big pier walkway that connects all the buildings and then there's one big big pier that goes out into the ocean big like town square kind of vibe Mm -hmm. and there is Beryl's airship chained to the wood on the far side of that area torches are going up and you as you approach start seeing the patrolling aspect of some of these dark leather and red armored bloodhounds okay I think Kia looks at the Mojingle and says, Mojingle? Ready? Ready. And he just nods and looks at you. Okay. Um, He's still nodding, you, still looking at you. <laughs> Ready, he says again. Um, do you... <laughs> <laughs> Clearly doesn't understand what you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can... We should go no see now. We go no see now? Yes. To be stealthy. <laughs> no see. And uh, he, he like reaches down and like grabs Frogrick, who was a little off to the side, and Frogrick's like, Ugh, and uh, gets sucked in. And you step in, and he starts raising up his arms over the top of you guys again, like a shower, and starts shaking ever so slightly. And the dandruff starts falling, and you feel yourself go invisible. What? <laughs> I have interesting creatures. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you had way too much fun making this guy. I was guy. just chuckling to myself at my computer and being like, <laughs> Mo Jingle. <laughs> <laughs> so, the way this is going to work is as you approach, um, we're going to just do like collective group success stealth checks okay. versus people that you're going to see. As you approach, night fully kind of setting in. You're feeling better about this with the invisibility. Mm-hmm. As you come up to the west side of the town you start looking or sorry the east side of town you start looking and you see kind of like a break in the buildings and you can see through some of the buildings out into the ocean out into the piers you when you first saw this it looked like the bloodhounds had gathered everybody up Mm -hmm. and they were doing some sort of talk some sort of thing out to everybody right yeah and so you see now that those people are away and they seem to be doing patrols and you also hear the sounds of places getting like ransacked. Mm. You hear stuff tossing down. You hear somebody yell like, maybe you chuck it here. And then there's a crash and a boom. And you're noticing that as you approach the buildings, the bloodhounds are obviously like searching through these buildings and houses. Okay. Is Zar and Harwick and Beryl still out? You have no idea from your viewpoint. You were just on the back side of these buildings. All you see is one bloodhound patrol lighting some torches and wandering around, and you hear these sounds inside the building. You don't see anybody else. Okay. I think Kia goes to the corner of the building and tries to... Would she be able to see, like, peeking... Now peeking around the building, would she be able to see where she saw... Bizarre before. Um, you're on the back side of the building. You would probably need to go down the alleyway and peek around the front side of the building to see where they were since they were kind of in that town square. Okay. It's sort of out in front of everything. But as you peek around this corner, you do see a patrol pass by of bloodhounds. And just, you know, for cinematic sake, one looks directly towards you and you panic and pull back. And then a little voice whispers in your ear going, ha, 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 no see. <laughs> and he did not see you. Oh, okay. But you will still make noise. So. Okay. You can start inching forward. However, I'm going to need 
your guys' first stealth check as you make your way into the alley. Mm. And it will be with advantage. Oh. Because you are invisible. Advantage? Mm-hmm. Can't get much better than that. That is um, a 24. So you are emboldened by the Mojingle's words in your ear, and you guys start making your way around the corner. Cabot's in there going, Kia, Kia. Now I just want to remind you, not not a big fighter. Yes. But we're going to stay close, and I do love to get fiddly with things. Find out where they are, maybe I can unlock things or something like that. Thank you. And you guys move in and you start peering around the front part of the buildings, mm-hmm. feeling very stealth. The slight tinkle of dandruff falling onto your head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you peer around the corner and you can see down the main pier now. You see a couple, you know, a couple hundred feet off to your right is this big town square style pier spot. Um, okay. You see Barrel's ship chained still there in the uh, background, again, that airship. And then you also see on kind of the other end of town where that town square is, you see a building that has a crowd kind of around it and bloodhounds are currently pushing people into said building. Mm. Okay. And you see another patrol walking Um, away from you. I'm going to try and um, since it's walk since the patrol is walking away away from me mm-hmm. I'm going to try and head toward that building okay do you want to head on the main pier or do you want to head behind the buildings behind the buildings behind the buildings. it would be safer okay. in her mind so you guys start sneaking back down the alleyway and you start creeping along you get up next to the next building can you please make another <gasps> advantage stealth check if it matters sorry I thought this was a six I turned it over it had a one um if it matters, it's a 25. I well, don't think it does. Well, that was your previous Yeah, that was my Yeah, no, you did one. great. Okay. My guy got a nat one. Mm, that's not good. Mm, that's not good at all. 16. That's pretty good. Okay. Well, <laughs> You're I, a stealthy it, I rolled a 10 and then a nat one, so. Ah, good thing you had advantage. You guys start making your way through the next, or past the next building, and there's a window that's open, and like for a second with that lower thing, you hear... Noises, and then suddenly you see somebody like toss a dresser out the window in front of you guys, and it crashes against the ground. And she just goes, uh, Kia just like jumps back and is like, Nee. Yeah, and everybody stops. And then you hear some chuckling from the inside, and you hear some some guy go, Ha ha ha, nice toss. And then they're rummaging through some other stuff. But the window is open as you guys sneak by. If you want to peek in or not, you keep on moving. I think she'd keep on moving. Okay. You start making your way further along this area. Uh, You come up to the next building and nothing's in that one. And then you notice there's a larger gap between this building and the next area. It looks like more of a major road passes out of town to the east. And uh, there's a there's a pathway through here and it's pretty well lit. Again, Mm. you guys are invisible, but footprints, things of that nature. And you do see two guards standing on either side of the town square side of things. And as you peek around the corner and see, you see that you're looking towards the town square entrance. This is like the main kind of nice entrance in town. And as you peek around that corner, you see Barrel Ship and the town square pier. Okay. With two guards standing guard, being a little bit more attentive because they're not walking. Okay. And, but this, but I wouldn't have to go through, I wouldn't have to go on that road to get no. to the You just have to cross building. a large open area where there's some guys paying a little bit more attention, a.k.a. the DC is higher. Okay. So, do you want to keep moving invisibly? Do you want to distract? Do you want to change up your tactic? You have lots of people with you. Mm-hmm. What does Kia want to do? Hmm. She is going to... She still has her random fox figurine that she got. Mm-hmm. Um... And from Cowie, and so she is going to take that out and say, this would be useful at some point. And she's going to try to, she's going to go around the building that she's in, not on the main sidewalk, but okay, on the on other the side, side. Okay. on the alley side, and chuck it, ch- throw the fox figurine um, as far away in the to get the guards to turn the other direction from the main road. Like throw it towards the town square pier thing? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, can you go ahead and make an athletics check for me? Athletics? I mean, you're tossing it. No, my first bad roll, that is a... A seven. Not in that one, though? No. Okay. Um, We'll say that the issue is not how far you toss it, necessarily. The issue is the guards paying attention. Mm. You throw it, it doesn't quite go as far as you want, and you hear a guard go, Hey, what was that? And the other one goes, Go check it out. And you go back around to your yeah. team, and you look, and there's one guard. So now's your chance, but not quite good enough toss to get both of their attention. Okay. Um, okay. She is still going to try to cross, because oh. that's a... You, start, you enter back into the Mojingles field of invisibility. Do I still get advantage? You do, because you are invisible. Okay. Oh, so sad. Um, 17. Oh, extra sad. His first roll was a nat 20, oh. but he has disadvantage. <gasps> oh, nice. And so I got a 15. Mm. And so I will say that you get across. You start going. Flibbit's holding his breath, trying his best not to make the stealth song. Uh, Frogrick's trying to hold in his rivets. Cabot's moving along. And right as you get across, the Mojingle is pretty big, and his, like, fur scrapes along a little bit of a hinged, like, signboard, because he's so tall. Mm -hmm. And it goes, queek, queek, queek. And the guy looks over your direction, but then at about that time, his colleague goes, nothing here except a weird little fox figurine. It's kind of (laughs) cute. Check this out. And then the other guy looks in your direction, doesn't see anything, and goes and looks at the fox. <laughs> so you guys make it across to Go Kelly. The thing. As you get across to this area and you're approaching a, a larger, the backside of a larger building, you, you think m- that um, the next two are most likely mm-hmm. uh, the ones that you saw. There's no noises in this one, though, uh, at first. But then as you kind of make that move and get a little bit closer down the backside of the building, you hear voices from inside. You hear a familiar voice inside. Is there a window nearby? There is a window nearby. She it's is... closed, but you could see through it. Um, she, uh, Kia is going to go over to the window. Still with, hopefully still within the invisibility field. Yeah, you're still field. invisible, yep. And just... Yeah, so you can peek, peek up. up. They can't see you. Uh, just make a stealth check with advantage, just on the account of noise or weirdness. Really good, actually. Um, 19. 19, okay. Uh, you peek your head up, and you are able to see inside, sitting down in a large chair, Czar Bloodhoof. Big Minotaur, again. 10 feet tall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Bigger than the Mojingle. Yeah. As you look inside, he looks a little weird in here because the roofs are so short. <laughs> he probably has to duck his head to sit. Or to stand in here, so that's probably why he's sitting. And across from him is a um, another bloodhound. Mm. And he's, the bloodhound over there, this lady, uh, she's dressed in the armor, tiefling. Oh, horns galore. And she's like, yes, sir, uh, we, we've searched most of the houses. We, we haven't found anything yet. Uh, we're, we're, we're not sure where else to look. And uh, Czar, <clears throat> well, I know, I know Harwick. And I know it's here somewhere. Get out there and keep looking. And she's like, yes, sir. And she does the little, like, salute. Mm-hmm. And uh, she wanders off. And she closes the door behind him. and Or behind herself. And then Czar sits there. And you hear a loud, Ugh, dang it, Harwick. Why you gotta make this hard? And shakes his head. Hardwick? Ha ha ha. And uh, then he sits there and he's fiddling with something in his hand. Do you want to make a perception or investigation check? My perception is better. 13. 13. Okay. You look in his hand and it was a low DC because you recognize Mm -hmm. it. It's something that you also have. And it appears to be Maud's walkie talkie thing that you tried to reach out to her with. Mm -hmm. And it kind of worked the other day. Remember your, Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call those? Your rocky talkies? He's holding it now. Kind of confirming what you thought. Maud is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's probably in that other building. He took it from her. Okay. But not her phone, because she dropped that. Yeah, yeah. That was behind. She had the Rocky Taki, but for whatever reason, she hasn't been using it. Hasn't been making calls. All that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... And he's, he's just sitting there. He's just sitting. And as you kind of crouch back down and, and Cabot and everybody's there, Flibbit comes up to you and he's like, Well, 
What did you see? Zara's searching for something. Searching for something in the town? Apparently that Harwick hid. Yeah. And he also has mods Rocky Talkie. Okay. Well, let's go continue on, I guess. And we'll see. Yeah. As you kind of crouch down, finish talking to the flippant, you guys move to the ne- edge of the next building. You hear big commotion inside the next building, and you are very sure that this is that building. This okay. is the one that you saw them forcing all these town f- townsfolk into. Not a huge town, there's, but there's probably 150 people in this building. Oh, wow. Maybe 200. And you get that feeling that this, as you look kind of at this building, it looks almost like a big town hall type mm. of building. And uh, Are there any windows? <laughs> there are some windows. There's a balcony on the upper floor, too. Mm. It's pretty high up there, but we would say, you know, you could figure out your own way of getting up there. It's not jumpable. Yeah. Um, jumpable, perhaps, from a window frame? Maybe. Well, you got you got abilities. You look and tell me what you got. Mm. But um, you know that uh, there's not really... There's some windows. They're closed. And you hear the inside, you know, voices of people like yelling and bloodhounds being like, just tell us where they are and we won't have to worry about it. And after a little period of time, you do hear the voice of Beryl as oh. she's like, hey, let go of him. And, and she like, you hear this kerfuffle happening, and it's all stuff that you're just hearing from the inside. So okay, that's what you hear. Hmm. So is the ker- is the kerfuffle happening <laughs> on the um, lower floor? Yeah, it seems like that's probably where the main hall is. Okay. And maybe there's some offices upstairs or something. Kia doesn't want to go in through the front door, having with a group of four people and an eight foot tall blue yeti mm-hmm. called Mojingle. Uh, keeping her invisible. Oh, jingle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she doesn't want to go in through the front door. I think she's going to she's going to hop up on the window on the windowsill. Okay. And then it, she's going to find a window. Is there a window? Yeah, there's a window. Okay, near the balcony. Kind of. Like like on the same side as the balcony. Yeah, yeah. On the first floor. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um, then she's going to hop up on the window frame. Then try to see if she can try to reach up as far as she can. I'll tell you right now, it's too tall for that. Uh, it's not. That's not what I'm doing. Oh. Um, she's going to try and reach up as far as she can and take out one of her little pitons that she hasn't used since her escape from oh. since her escape. Uh huh. And is going to reach up as far as she can and try to hammer it in quietly. Okay. Ding ding ding. <laughs> Uh, you're going to need to make for me a stealth check without advantage as you start to hammer pitons into the side of a wooden building. Luckily for me, I got really well. That is a 21. Oh, nice. Okay. You start hammering them in. You get up a little further. You get, you, you, you manage to kind of support yourself on the first mm-hmm. two and get up a little bit further. You reach up for the next one and you can see your hand. Mm. You're no longer going to be invisible in this process. And yeah. Mojingo looks... He kind of lets the invisibility drop for a second. He looks up at you and he goes, "Me can go no up." That's fine. I think I'll be. I think I'll be fine. Okay, Flibbit flies up next to you. Yeah. And he's like, "I'll come with you." Okay. And Cabot looks at you and he goes, "Well, what do you think that me and and Frogrick should do? Keep an eye on the keep an eye on the bloodhounds and see if they see if they do anything like to hurt the townsfolk or." Keep an eye on the conversation going on inside here. Okay. Well, I will. St- do you want us to stay here then, invisible? Sure. Okay, because we ch- could or find some place to hide. Okay. We could also. I don't know how you feel about it, but we could also try to get out the blimp. It's. Is that too dangerous? It might be too dangerous. It's changed down anyway. Ah. Okay. Well then, we'll stay here and keep a gar- guard. Okay. And the Mojingo looks up at you, and he's. He gives you a big old meaty thumbs up, and he's he nods. And I then give he the thumbs up back. Raises his hands and turns everybody invisible again, including mm-hmm. himself. Wow. <laughs> yep. You finally get up to a point where you think you could make the leap to the deck of this balcony. Go ahead and make an acrobatics check. 24. Nice. Easily, you are finally able to reach it. You leap up, grab the railing, pull yourself over. Again, just like a wood building here, flip it's like, Nice. And as you pull yourself up and over, you see that there is a double door here that can be opened, and uh, you can hear the noises much more clearly now that you're here. She is going to um, crouch down and try the handle 
of the door. Is it lo- locked? No, it's open. Okay. You she crack it open? Cracks it open just a little bit mm-hmm. and peeks inside. Peeks inside. You can't really... It's hard to see. You you push it open. It's purely dark in here. There's no light upstairs. I have but dark vision. But it seems like... Yeah, and you can see that it's a hallway. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a hallway with some doors. And then at the far end, it looks like a stairs kind of an open... There's lighting that you can see down the stairwell okay. coming from downstairs. And you can hear the voices much more clearly now. And she's going to open the door a bit wider and slip inside and then close the door. As you do that, uh, you start creeping your way along the hallway. You can start hearing these voices more and more. And eventually, again, you hear Beryl arguing with somebody and then eventually like being held down. And you hear a little you know, gnome's voice mm-hmm. peek up. Or speak up. He's like, I've told you everything I need to tell you. This is my town, and you are treating my townsfolk inappropriately. I want to speak to Tsar Bloodhuff. <laughs> you know, and then you hear a familiar voice, which whose accent has long been forgotten. It's just my voice. <laughs> and Maud goes, Harwick, calm down. We don't want to cause a problem. Cause a problem? Look what they're doing to my town. And uh, they're kind of arguing, and there's some bloodhounds arguing back. That's what you hear. Okay. Kia stops at the top of the staircase and looks down. Is it cornered? Like, no. does it, or is it a straight staircase? It, Can she see you, down to the yeah, bottom floor? You, you get to the edge, there's a little bit of a balcony rail, and you see the stairwell kind of goes down the side of a building, mm-hmm. of the building, and underneath you, there's just a crowd of people. There's like a bunch of benches, and they're all looking kind of back where you came from, but underneath you, as if there's like a podium up there. And it's basically bloodhounds at the door, And everybody in here arguing and yelling. And you notice that the bloodhounds are pulling past world tech items off of people and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to get an idea of maybe what they're looking for. Okay. Can I see Maud or Barrel or Gnome? You're going to have... You you, you can't quite see them from your thing. You're either going to have to peek over or you're going to have to go down the stairwell. Mm. But they're the voices that you pull out of all the other voices happening. Okay. Um... Kia is going to... How many bloodhounds are just... Are interspersed throughout the room? Probably like, like from six. Six out of 200 people? Yeah, but you start... No, you, you also saw outside. There's a lot more in the town. Yeah. There's But there's probably six people in here. As well as, you know, coming through the door after a minute is that tiefling woman that mm-hmm. you saw. And uh, so uh, probably six or seven in here. Kia is going to try and... Sneak down the stairs as low as possible and okay. gestures for Flibbit to get low, too. He, like, goos himself down to the stairwells, <laughs> starts sloughing along with his weird, gooey body. <laughs> uh, can you go ahead and make a stealth check with advantage? Because everybody down there is distracted. Uh, advantage? hmm Much better. I got a 5 and an 18, so that is a 24. Nice. You feel very confident in your ability to stay low on these stairs. The stairs themselves are still a little dark. And as you are kind of peeking down just enough, you start to be able to see the full room. Again, this big town hall thing, big podium up front, and you see standing up near the front of the room on an elevated position, you see Beryl being held down by two bloodhounds. You see Maud keeping an arm around a little gnome guy that you can assume is Harwick. And he's dressed very nicely, and he has dark brown hair, uh, kind of longer brown hair and a nice goatee. <laughs> and uh, and he's looking very frustrated. Mm. And Maud's almost like holding him back a little bit. And uh, you see them having a hushed conversation. Okay. At about that time, you hear the footsteps of a thud, thud, thud. From thud. the door? The main door. Okay. Is she, is Kia all the way down the stairs? No, I would say you're about halfway. You're You're on the stairwell. Mm-hmm. But if you go down to the bottom of the stairs, you're going to basically be in the room with everybody else. Is that your plan? You want to blend into the crowd? I mean, there's literally 200 people here. I see, I, I see, I see. A one tabaxi I see. wearing a scarf what? cape is not going to attract That's attention. Very fair. What do you want to say to Flibbit, who would? Mm. How tall is the ceiling? Probably 20, 30 feet. Right here? It's, it's pretty hot. Are tall. there rafters? Sure. Okay. I whisper to Flibbit. Flibbit, yeah. see those rafters up there? Yeah. You're going to attract more attention than I will. Uh, go up there and hide. He's like, got it. And uh, 
I'm going to be extra stealthy. And he puts his back up against the wall, which is this like dark gray stone, and his color shifts into that kind of dark gray yeah. color. And he squirms his way up the wall and over to the rafters, nobody seeming to notice him. Yay. So he gets up into the rafters, and you, right before... Or maybe even right as the door opens, mm -hmm. you finally slip your way down into the crowd. Can you please make for me a stealth check? A little differently because it's blending in stealth check. Yeah. I maybe shout occasionally. To, a shout of protest. Yeah, you like walk in and be like, hey, <laughs> let go of us. Yeah. What'd you get? Natural one, which is a seven. A natural... <sighs> One, you say. Which is a total of seven. A natural one, you say. I know. Ow. Okay. You feel thoroughly hidden. You make your way down into the crowd. You start yelling things. You start being like, yeah, let go of Wander Wharf and uh, bloodhounds are the worst. And you're just yelling stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> you start working your way towards the crowd. At that moment, the doors burst open. And Tsar Bloodhoof himself steps through. Again, huge minotaur. The door's even tall enough. <laughs> he has to duck his head to get through the door, but he feels comfortable in this room because this room's so tall. Yeah. He's got his armor, again, like that leather armor. He's not wearing the cloak like he was uh, like the last time you saw him. And he's totally geared up. Again, he's got crazy like past world weapon on his back. But again, he's fiddling with the thing in his hand, the Rocky Talkie. Mm -hmm. And he's fiddling on his other hand with that device that you saw back in Athon that seemed to summon, etc., control scrapers. Yeah. And he walks through the crowd and the crowd parts like Yeah. Like a flood or whatever you want to call it. And he walks up to Harwick. And Harwick, this two to probably like a three and a half foot tall gnome puts his hands on his hips, looks up at Czar, and he goes, Now you listen here, Bloodhoof. We've had perfectly fine interactions before this, but lately you have gone too far. And I have heard that you are taking Passworld tech from my people, and I have had enough of it. And Czar just chuckles. He's like, <laughs> Well, he's seven feet taller than this tiny I don't know gnome. what you expect to do about it, little man, but we're here to take whatever we want. But, unfortunately, we haven't found what we want yet. And he reaches down and he grabs Harwick by the collar and he picks him up to his level. Oh no, and that's Maud, seven feet of... Maud looks like she's about to throw down. Mm -hmm. And he puts out a hand in front of Maud with, and he's holding that little scraper device thing. And she doesn't really know what it is exactly. She might have an idea, mm -hmm. but she stops. And he looks at Harwick... Eye to eye, lifting Harwick <laughs> 10 feet up, right? And Harwick still got his hands on his hips, trying to be <laughs> as unfazed as possible. And he goes, I know who you are and what you used to do in the past. And he looks at Maud and he looks at Beryl and he said, And I know somewhere in this town you got a stash. Tell me where it is or your town's about to suffer. And your facial uh, expressions. <laughs> and uh, like, he clicks a button on the thing, and you hear another loud footsteps <laughs> outside. And the doors burst open. Well, no, they were already open. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they burst open again. <laughs> they burst open more. And a scray clops is standing there with an eye looking towards Tsar Bloodhoof. And Bloodhoof is controlling it in seemingly with this device. And it just stands there. And Harwick looks at it, looks at back at Maud, looks at Barrow, looks at his town, and he finally gets his hands off his hips. And he's like, all right, fine. And uh, he goes, there's a spot on the, on the north side of town. There's a well, third brick from the right on the bottom. You'll see which one I mean. Press it, and you'll find my stash. And, As a well is round. Yeah. And Zell, Zar drops him, and he goes, ha. <laughs> See, it wait, wasn't so hard. Wait, drops him to 10 feet? Yeah, Harwick's fine. That's right. not that far. 10 feet is the very bottom amount of damage for fall damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's fine, though. Okay. We'll say he didn't fully drop him 10 feet because he would have been up 7 feet, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. Okay. Anyway, he drops him, and Harwick is pretty fit, 
for his age, and he lands on his feet. And Maud scoops him back up, and they finally let Beryl go, and they're all kind of crouched there. And Zar starts leaving. Mm -hmm. Zar gets all the way to the door, and then tilts his head one way, tilts his head the other way, crack his neck. He's kind of sitting there for a second. And then he turns his head all the way around and looks like an right. Owl? <laughs> no, like his body too. Okay. And he looks directly at you with your nat one stealth check. Uh, he's looking directly at me right now. Uh huh. I just <laughs> wave at him and say, <laughs> "Miss me?" <laughs> <laughs> and he suddenly uh, reaches forward, clicks the button on the remote steps out of the way of this scray clops and closes the door and goes <laughs> and runs off and all the townsfolk start screaming. Wait, you said he you said he closed the door like he went like outside. He went outside. Okay. Left the scray clops in here, closed the door, laughed, and is rushing over to the stash. Okay. Maud looks over at what he was looking at with your wave saying <laughs> miss me and she goes, Kia? Hi Maud. And I need you to roll initiative. <laughs> Ooh, that's a seven. A seven. Maud and Beryl and Harwick are there, and you also know that Flibbit's up above, but um, they are weaponless, they are armorless, they have nothing. And so Maud's going to look at you, and she's going to say, Well, hope you've learned some new stuff. We'll keep the townsfolk safe. Okay. And Harwick's like, Everyone, get to the walls, clear a space. And Flibbit kind of drops down. With a nat one on his initiative. Oh, no. Uh, we'll say he doesn't drop down yet. Okay. But Wait, does that mean I go you, before him? You go before <gasps> him. But wow. unfortunately, you were caught off guard with that nat one. The Scrayclop steps forward. Its big central eye was uh, was blue, mm -hmm. looks at you, turns orange, and charges your direction. And it is going to try to attempt to make a pounce attack on you. Uh-oh. So it's got to see if it's going to hit first. A 16? Oh, oh, the one above. One like you. Like you got, you, it. you got it. Yeah. Okay. It rushes forward and it does a 16. So it succeeds on hitting you. Mm -hmm. You are going to take a total of seven damage. Oh, okay. As it attacks you. However, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Strength? Yep. Why couldn't it be something nice? Because like you are, he is trying to knock you over. Mm, I don't make strength saving throws. 15. 15, you succeed. You are able to slide backwards like it's a cool anime shot. You keep your footing and you are pushed back 10 feet, but you are able to <laughs> keep your footing and stay there. <laughs> it is now your turn. You have your cool new bow. You have your cool new fork and knife thing. And again, this... This scraper is on all fours. It's very metallic being, and as you pull your bow out or as you look at your bow, you see that the some of these pieces look like they came straight off a of scrayclops or something mm -hmm. just like this. Okay. And you are pushed back, so you're not next to him. Are there any fighting people nearby, or is it just big what do you guy? Mean by? Is it just scrape scrayclops? Uh oh, like bloodhounds? Yeah. Are um, there any enemies nearby other than I mean, I guess they'd be counted as my enemies, but are there any actively in the initiative order uh, people other than the Scrape? Yes, Hawks? there are two Bloodhounds as well okay. that seem to uh, be squaring up next to the Scrape How far away are they from the Scrape I mean, probably right next to it, because while it rushed forward, I'll say one of them. I mean, they're probably within. Within. I What I ask is, are they within 30 feet of the Scrape Oh, absolutely. The room's not that big. Are you doing some scraper brain thingy? Yep. Yeah, maybe. Sweet. Maybe. Um, so she is uh Kia is going to pull out her bow, her new bow. And just like whisper. Feels like it glows in your hand as you pull it out. Uh, and there's a little voice in the background that says, Scraper Bane. <laughs> and then you see Scrape that Flibet has floated down next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I say Okay, thanks for the sound effects, I no guess. No problem, anytime. Um, and Kia is going to turn around and is going to charge up. Maybe press a little button on the side, I don't know. Um, yeah, however you think it would work. I think 
on the handle, there's a little button. Mm -hmm. And as she knocks an arrow, she presses the button and it electrifies the arrow. And she's going to shoot at the Scrayclops. Let loose the arrow. Four. And I think (gasps) technically you can... um, Absolutely amazing. Out of a possibility of 30 to hit, I got a 28. What'd you get? 18. Nice. 18. So you go ahead and hit. Do your thing with your bow. Or let so, me know what I need to do with my bow. Do your damage first and then... I made the I made the item, but I don't really remember what it does. That was a while so, ago. Normal damage for my arrow just to the Scrayclops is 8 damage. 8 damage. Okay. Piercing if it matters. Okay. And then... Only 8? Yeah. Did you not roll very good? No, I rolled a three. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then as the arrow hits it, um, it electrifies the uh, sh- the scraper, and it and art lightning arcs to the two other. Um, oh, cool! To the two bloodhounds, and can you please? Uh, so the just uh, since the arrow hit it. Um, the Scrayclops itself takes seven lightning damage. Oh, nice. And, um, y- and your two bloodhounds make a dexterity saving throw. Nat one. Nat one. <gasps> wow. Wow. That was brutal. Thank you. So they each, oh, yeah, yeah. So th- both of them take seven damage as well. Seven damage as well. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to say with two nat ones of failure of, of that saving throw, too, uh, we're going to say it shocks them, and they both fall prone. <laughs> Yay. Um, Flibbit flies down. Or actually, and Kia's going to um, move her 30 feet away from the Scrayclops, so and now she's 40 feet away. Okay. Can you roll just a sort of ambient persuasion check for me? Persuasion? Yeah. What does that have to and do you can with, do it with advan- that? You can do it with advantage. Uh, 18. 18. Um, yeah, yeah, 18. You see uh, the crowd disperse, and Maud and Harwick and Beryl are kind of like making sure everybody stays back, mm-hmm. and you shock those two guys so bad that they fall prone. I think probably between Maud on one side and Beryl on the other and the two and there's no all the other bloodhounds have like left the room yeah um they hold them down they oh. like restrain them and pull them away too like basically keeping them out of the fight oh uh, w- the fact that they both rolled nat ones they just deserve to be kicked out of the fight yay thank you so the villagers and, and I'll say that's kind of what Mod and Barrel are doing because normally they're quite mm-hmm. fighters themselves but they're they don't ready. have weapons yeah and so they're holding those guys back with the towns Flibbit's turn he comes down and he's like Kia, how you doing? Fine. You want me to make you better? Maybe. Okay, he comes down, wraps a tentacle up around your shoulders, and is going to cast his cure wounds on you. Thank you. Uh, hey, um, that's math is 10. 10 healing. Ooh, yay. I say thank you, Flippin'. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to fly away now. And he <laughs> flies 30 feet to your left <laughs> and uh, stays put there. Uh, the Scrayclops. Shaking off the electricity, looks your direction, uh, and is going to move up towards you, and is going to Can go Can it reach for- me? Huh? Can it reach me? Well, you just moved 30 feet away, right? Yes, yeah, so and I'm 40 feet away from it. You can. This thing has a 60-foot movement speed. Because it's a big, big dog, and it starts running towards you. And it reaches you, and it's doing two slashes. First attack, a four. I'm so good at rolling. 17. That one hits. First attack, you dodge underneath. Second attack, you weren't quick enough, and he slashes across and gets you. 11 damage. <gasps> Ow. Hibbit, Flibbit's healing gone away. It is your turn. Really? Even with my seven initiative? Dude, this is just the three of you. Wow. And that was his <laughs> turn. <laughs> wow. Okay. So he's right up next to me now? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Bonus action Zephyr Strike. Nice. Zephyr Strike. Disengage for free. 
but she's going to attack him with her new swords. Oh, first. cool. Do so, it. Um, okay. And then she's going to... Um, so she's going to tap her little pin, airplane pin, and activate Zephyr Strike. Okay. And then she's going to swipe. It's a double swipe with her fork, knife, and spoon sword. Yeah. Because she has two little, attacks. As you... As you go to slash them, almost like they were waiting to be slashed, that little energy field <laughs> right in front of them like sharpens the tines and the edge of the spoon <laughs> into blades. Okay. First attack for the fork knife. Natural 20, which is a 27. Hey, nice. So again, the way we do it, full damage. Okay, so and six, then. and then another d6, which is oh, one. So six plus five is 11. 11 damage. 11 damage for the first attack. Nice. Go ahead. And then second attack. Spoon sword. Much worse. That is a 16. Still hits. Yay. 10 damage on the second one. Dang. And then she is going, then Kia is going to disengage. disengage or which, at least move away. Is? It's You just move away and I don't think you provoke opportunity attacks. Oh, and she's going to move. Mm, it's not going to be enough. Because the thing has 60 foot movement, you said? Uh huh. She's only going to be able to move 60 feet away. That's sad. And I don't have anything else to help with that. You have your cat thing. Oh, and I didn't move last turn, did I? Can't, like, isn't that like once per turn you can do stuff? I think to recharge it, you can't move. You use it, it's not that. It's in your features and traits. You move. Oh, when you move on your turn in combat, you can double your speed until the end of your turn. Mm-hmm. Once you used, you can't use this trait again until you move zero feet on one of your turns. Right. And I have... Mm-hmm. So you could double your movement speed and Zephyr Strike stacks. Adds 30. So that would be 90 huh. feet. I can move 90 feet away from this thing. You can. <laughs> that being said, the room's not quite that big to get fully 90 feet away. Without maybe going upstairs or because you're kind of in like the middle of the room with this thing right now Mm -hmm. or getting over it and going towards the door where it came from. I think she's going to, but would going, oh, I don't provoke opportunity attack. Exactly. So I think she's going to go past it. Okay. And towards the doors. Um, So she's going to put away her, she's her swords. She's already sheathed her bow, so she's going to, she's her spoon swords. And I was thinking that, and is going to, with her super speed, airplane speed, uh-huh. she's going to um, jump up uh, onto the onto the scraper, scrape clap's head. And you like and force its head down with yeah. the first step. And then uh, run along its back and jump off to <laughs> uh, however far away the door is. Yeah, from it's where. probably, we'll call it like 80 feet. Okay, yeah, so, I can move that. Yeah, you're able to... Get over and get past it and get out of the way. Um, as you turn and as you rush past, Flibbit flies down and he goes, well, I'll do the thing I know I could always do. <laughs> and he is going to release his stink cloud. Um, and the target must succeed on a dexterity saving Bro, it did not succeed. Nice. With a three. I'm so bad at rolling for my bad guys. I it know. It is a skill. And flibbit has got an upgrade to his... Stench Cloud. Stench Cloud released. Flip it does nine damage. This oh, thing wow. is looking pretty, pretty hurt. Maud looks at you and she goes, Kia, you're doing great. The last time we fought one of these, we didn't do so good. That's right. And she's going to like stand up with all the crowd and they're like, come on guys, let's help her. <laughs> and they start just like pulling chandeliers off of walls and like picking up chairs. And everybody starts throwing stuff at this Scrayclops, and it's just like taking the hits but walking towards you and taking the hits and walking towards you on its turn. And and it gets really, really close to you, and it drops down to one knee. And uh, basically, metagame, it has... All you have to do is hit it, <laughs> and it couldn't... It dashed towards you for its turn, so it is right next to you. Okay. But it dashed as in it moved so slowly because everybody was pelting it with things. And it's fallen down to one knee. It couldn't attack you on its turn. It had to use its action to get over here. So you're saying it has below five health left? Maybe. Why? <laughs> because you said all I'd have to do is hit it. Yeah. That I have, and my swords are a plus four, and that is my lowest. Oh, oh, oh. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so I think Kia is going to pull out both her swords. Actually, no. She is going to, for the sake of cinematics, um, she's going to backflip away. Nice. And uh, because it's a Zephyr Strike, and pull out her bow midair and is going <laughs> to try and shoot the thing in the eye. All right, so you do a super cool backflip. You, f- you roll backwards, and you go ahead and release your arrow. Super cool. 23. 23. And you hit. And Do I even need to roll damage? No, you don't. Okay. And with especially with Zephyr Strike, I'm assuming the it, final like Oh, I oh yeah. I'm I'm just going to add it for fun. Yeah, you can roll damage for fun. Okay, I'm going to um then <laughs> How badly <clears throat> do you decimate this thing? Okay, eight damage first. I keep rolling threes on my D eight. <laughs> and then uh so eight damage plus six force damage. So, so fourteen it total needed damage. Two Hit points remaining. <laughs> and you do the super cool backflip. Maybe you even like bounce off its head again, right? To get that mm-hmm. springboard launch. You do a backflip. You pull your new bow out. Feels good in your arms. Scrapers bane. And you release the arrow. <laughs> and like a blink of light, the light goes out. And there's like a pause. <laughs> and you land, three point landing like a superhero. Uh, you know, the mm-hmm. t- knee down and the yeah. fist down. And you stand back up. And Mod. Just start slow clapping. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was beautiful. And uh, everybody's like, woo And uh, a bunch of the townsfolk rush over and start, you know, making sure the scraper's secured away yeah. or whatever. The door opens up, and there's nothing there. And then it closes. <laughs> and then after a moment, you see the Mojingle <laughs> and Cabot and Frogrick, and the Mojingle appears, and everyone gets a hushed silence. And he goes, no, see? <laughs> and then he nods and he goes, see, now. And uh, Cabot looks at everybody and he's like, don't worry, he's a friend. <laughs> and Maud comes over and she puts a hand on your shoulder. You haven't seen her in so, so long. And she goes, well, kid, I feel like we both got quite a story to tell. Yeah. We're, but first, and then Harwick comes over and he's like, yeah, first, we got to save my town. And that is where we're going to end the session. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, Harwick's cute. I like him immediately. He's he's a he's a stubborn fighter gnome who stood up against ten foot tall in a suit. Of, in a suit. <laughs> All right, thank you guys again for joining us for another ridiculous episode. I was the daughter. I was the dad. Arguably, still am. The yeah, dad. I don't. But for that episode, <laughs> uh, follow us on all the business. Listen to us on all the business. <laughs> I don't think that's very helpful. Yeah, they know. They know where it is. If they're listening, they know how to listen to podcasts. Yeah. But give us a review. We don't have a lot of them. We'd Comment, like more. review. All that good stuff. Star thingy or something. Oh, wait. We're not a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> we will... See you guys next time on Dad Dad Venturous. Venturous.